All right. Johnny Depp says that the rumor he's going to be appearing in another Pirates of the Caribbean is simply that it is only a rumor. And uh, it was made up by someone. So, whew. Well, he already uh, starred in Pirates of the Courthouse. So. Well, I'm, 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 you know. He couldn't take yes. the time to do the Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> Does he really, do we really need that? I'm thinking no. I'm thinking no. I think we don't need that. There's a lot of things we need, and that's not one of them. All right. So, uh, congratulations to you for being here. If you're live, go ahead and ask questions uh, as they pertain to the situation. Or they pop up. We've got a special vacation message for you. What is that? It's this. Uh, The first full week of July, we will be on vacation. So don't panic. Don't freak out. We weren't kidnapped. We weren't censored. We weren't taken off the air. We're just taking some time off. If you're a new listener and you'd like to catch up, it's a great time to catch up while we're on vacation next week. Go back That's and right. start at episode number one. You can do that at studentofthegun.com. Mm. If you just want to use your podcast player, then you can get the latest 50 episodes is how many you can get there. So go back to the the first one that's available on your podcast app and listen from there. You know what? I, you know what I hear? Calling me? A nap? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, a nap. For sure. but you don't, don't say that because then I'm going to want one. No, I hear Guitar Center calling me. Oh, yeah. I bet you that they've got a you know how they are they're like every other car they're like furniture salesmen and car salesmen and mattress salesmen every holiday they do a whatever like when we were here for memorial day yeah they had a memorial day sale yeah it was a door buster sale it looked like i we went i went in there and it looked like i don't know like it was a shelf buster, like they were packing sure. to go to college or something there was just crap everywhere yeah uh but if I can save money, then I don't care. Oh, yeah. I don't care if there's cardboard boxes laying all over the floor. If I can save money. So there you go. Yeah, that's. I think that's what I should do. What do you guys think? You think you should do that? All right. Well, I'm think thinking so, and-, and contemplating that. I'm going to go ahead and let Zach play the music. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear. We also discuss current events and politics because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. (laughs) I knew I was right. Guitar Center, all 683 locations nationwide how fourth do i get of, early access fourth of july deals check it out <laughs> yep. and I, I was gonna say speaking as a former child since you've got the little rugrats running around there speaking having, as a former going child. to a store where there's a bunch of cardboard boxes laying everywhere can actually be a plus yeah no, no we're not taking the children i that's, think that's, that's a fantastic idea yeah. let's take ruth uh, and let her grab everything just let her grab pull everything down off the shelves what's no. this cord <laughs> Not, I might like right. you can g- grab the boxes home and bring them home, and she can make a fork. No, no. We have enough boxes. We have enough everything. Nah. We have enough everything here. Except for space. Yeah, except for space. That's what we don't have enough of. All right. Question. You got questions. We got answers. Yada, yada, yada. Bing, bang, boom. All right. Let's let's uh, let's go ahead, and I guess we'll just move right into our Duracoat Finish Firearm of the Week. Are you sure that's what we want to move into and not the or, not this thing? We, we we already said that. that during the preamble. If you want me to say it again, we did. I thought we said during like when we weren't recording. Hi, sweetheart. Yeah, we just did. Okay, then it. I guess we'll go. <laughs> oh, l- let's just go ahead and remind everybody. All right. So, real quick reminder. Might have uh, been because we're going to be on vacation yeah. next week. Vacation next week. First full week of First July. First full week of July, twenty twenty two. We'll be on vacation, so don't panic. And like I said to the live audience before, we're going to be hanging out with Glenn Beck on his ranch, I'm just kidding. in case. You didn't hear it because you're listening post. Then you can go back to the beginning of the episodes on your podcast player and listen from there. You can catch up next week. Catch up. Or if you're smart, like you're going to, like I know you are. And now that you have this information, you can go to studentofthegun.com and listen from episode 001. It's crazy. 01011101. All right. Play the music, crazy. All right.
right, bing, bang, boom. Yes, indeed, it's time for the uh, Duracoat Finish Firearms segment of the week brought to you by our good friends at Duracoat. You can either buy the best or you can buy an inferior product. If you choose to buy an inferior product, that is totally up to you. You can do that, uh, but you don't have to. You don't have to. Oh, <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Remember when I called the, uh, when we did the VZ58 thing and I said, yeah, it's, it's the check AK. And I, and I said, I said, oh, I hear that all the purists are having a stroke right now. They're like, nom, 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 nom. and somebody right in there, like, the Czechoslovakia was never part of the, of the Soviet Union. They were only a part of the Eastern Bloc Alliance against NATO. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> see, calm down. Just, just calm down, hippies. Calm down. Take a deep breath. <sighs> <sighs> It's like when I refer to the Czech Republic as Czechoslovakia and people have a stroke. I'm like, it's not my fault you decided to change the name of the country. You, know, you, you can't just keep changing the name and expect me to keep up with it. So, sorry. We haven't changed the name of our country. Maybe we should. Maybe we should. <laughs> mm. All right. So, uh, Jared, if you have a dad or a grandpa that has more than one gun let's say you have a dad or a grandpa that has been collecting guns accumulating them for their entire adult life yeah would you suggest recording those uh in a uh on a computer or nope. in a on a in a paper log book well, hold on a second let me envision this if i had a dad that did that if you had a, a father okay. or a grandfather that accumulated guns their entire adult life. Yeah, what I would do is I would probably purchase a paper logbook of some sort or make one out of a notebook. And I would document multiple pieces of information. Obviously, the, the type, the model of the thing. But then the most important thing to me is the story behind it because they've spent their entire adult life doing gathering these things and some of them are probably handed down from their grandpa their dad whatever then it's got stories behind it and that's what makes things valuable to people the stories that are wrapped around the item yes so it you can actually go uh to your favorite search engine and put in firearms logbook and there are there are several different types of paper well i was gonna use it in my laptop and it's like no stop do you know why you should not do that uh, many reasons, actually. Yeah, many reasons. Uh, right now, I'm looking at a laptop. Ask me if this is the laptop that I was looking at 10 years ago. Yeah. The answer is no. Well, we have iCloud nowadays. Oh, oh yeah. Well, they, go, they got the cloud, man. Uh, uh, Brownells actually has a Brownells firearms record-keeping oh, book. Oh, nice. Yes, they do. I'll go get a link to that. Uh, um, but this is more of a 4473 kind of a thing. What That's we're fine. talking that, about... That would work. What we're talking about is a record of grandpa's guns. Uh, last week we talked about uh, garage sale guns and how, you know, I'm sure that a lot of you guys know people or have encountered these, these garage sale guns or the grandpa guns, you know. Uh, but someday you and your kids might just be curious. You might just be curious about what's the story behind grandpa's guns uh or dad's guns or whatever and the, the truth of the matter is you know some of them some really don't have any stories you know someone might be like ah eh, whatever i just you know felt the need and i bought this you know but then again others for instance i possess uh a shotgun it's a, it's a and it's not fancy it's a harrington and richardson 20 gauge single shot uh, open hammer, you know, exposed hammer gun. Oh, uh, and if you were to just see that laying up against the wall or in a closet or whatever, you'd probably be like, yeah, whatever, That's not whatever, who cares? Well, I possess that because it belonged to my dad and it was the first gun that we purchased when we moved on to our farm in Ohio. And so someday that's going to belong to my kids and then potentially my grandkids 
So if you don't save those stories, if you don't preserve those stories, if they're not written down, you know, by the time it gets one or two generations down the line. Well, you like, either have a really good story if you have a good storyteller yeah. in, in there, that, but it might not be true. Well, if you have a good storyteller in there, the story, the true story could be lost. Well, but then it's your, your it would be my job as a I'm dad. Not, I'm not talking about making up fairy tales, yeah. but I mean, if... if you know, for instance, I, I am very, very fortunate to possess uh, guns from both of my side, both sides of my my parents' families. I got I have two uh, 22 rifles that came from my my dad's dad. Yeah. And I have a 22 pistol that came from my mom's dad. So I have I have handgun I have a handgun and I have two twenty two rifles from my grandparents, and someday my kids will have those and that'll be from their great grandparents and so on and so forth, and these are that's what makes it you know quite frankly I think a lot of these things that's what makes it imp- valuable. Mm-hmm. The value isn't so much because if you just looked at that you're like well it's an old Sears and Roebuck Model sixty six Marlin or whatever. Yeah, I'll list it at the yard sale. Big deal. 30 bucks. Yeah, I'll sell it for $50 at the yard sale or something. But but when you say, yeah, this this handgun belonged to your great grandfather. You know, your great and the you know the the one that uh that Grandpa McClellan had, your your uh your grandma's dad, yeah. Jared. He bought that during the uh or right at the beginning or right as the the ri- the race riots in Detroit were kicking off in the late 60s oh wow yeah and that's why he bought it that's interesting um you know, race riots detroit no 60s what that's uh, i don't believe you <laughs> look it up hippies could you uh, imagine yeah like i need a tool for personal defense i'm gonna go get a revolver a 22 revolver yeah could you imagine thinking that well the thing is in in the 60s you you would think that Right, that's yeah. what I'm saying. The yeah. advancement in technology now. There, there, there were no Glocks back then. Yeah. Um, so, as a matter of fact, the only well, they had it. If you thought about so. it, yeah, didn't back, you know those? Huh? They were they were invented in eighteen or 1965. Oh, Glocks were? No, no, no. The AR-15. Oh, the AR-15. Well, they did actually have AR-15s. Yeah. They, he could have bought one. You could have bought an AR-15. And the uh, I need to make sure AR-15 that the public was originally this is a public episode marketed to civilians I, I need to make sure that they know that that was not the true the real year it was that was it was twas joke it was making fun of no no i'm, I'm let's somebody look else up. that said that uh colt releases let me see colt releases talk to the audience um i just was okay then, we'll keep doing it and then you don't stop the thing what the f what are you looking for I'm looking for fingers at work. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can't get those on Amazon, sorry. Yes, the actually Colt marketed the AR fifteen uh to the American civilian market first before they sold it to the Air Force. I don't know what you're looking for. Oh, uh, just keep talking. First uh, I you ruined my train of thought. It's gone. How did I do that by looking at I was up? in the middle of talking and then you interrupted me. All right. Yeah, because you, you said, oh, no, I, I want people to, to know that I was just joking. In 1963, the U.S. military selected Colt manufacturers to make the automatic weapon for the uh, Colts. Yeah, Colt, actually, they made the first Armalite model. Colt made his first Colt Armalite AR-15 uh, rifles <laughs> uh, in 1959. Yes. Yes. So either way. Uh, there, there's actually a, a lot of really cool ads, black and white magazine ads that Colt came up with to uh, to sell their AR-15 to citizens. No, oh, it's a weapon of war that's never been, and it should never be available to the average person. You know what I find interesting? It's just a a quick uh, a quick aside that the same government that is telling us that the two two three five five six AR is too powerful. For mere peasants to own, and they shouldn't be allowed to have it. That same, actually, I said that same that same government. They were going to spend four point five billion to replace the five five six with a larger, more powerful caliber, but they changed their mind. You know what they changed it to, Jared? What's that? Six point five billion. So now they're gonna they're gonna spend six point five 
billion replacing the 556 because all of a sudden it's not powerful enough of a cartridge but it's too powerful for mere peasants and civilian stone so there you go but yeah your duracoat finish firearm of the week uh suggestion is this uh if you have a dad or a grandpa or uncle or whatever if you got somebody and they have been accumulating guns uh for their whole entire life or their adult life what you might want to do is get an actual physical notebook a real physical notebook and log in not just what the gun is you know it's a 20 gauge harrington richardson serial number 09599117 b2 but put, a put, story. put some notes you know dad bought this 1983 you know grandpa bought this 1983 first owned by uncle jim passed down to dad passed down to me or whatever because that's what makes them valuable that's what makes them heirlooms that you know if it's just a gun with no story behind it i mean it's fine it's a tool it's like a hammer or whatever but if it's the first gun that your you know that your dad ever bought or if it's the first gun that that your grandpa ever bought or uh, if it's the dad that your grand, you know, the, the gun that your grandpa bought and gave to your dad and then gave to you, that has a story and has meaning and your kids will probably appreciate it. So do your kids a favor and take the time to do that. All right. SDS imports, uh, they are our friends and I'm guessing that you have a SOTG giveaway. You have one day, you have one day and nine hours to get your butt over to SOTGGiveaway.com, sign up, and be eligible to win the Takarov TP, TBP, that's Tango Bravo Papa, Marine 12-gauge shotgun. So if you want to do that, get over there and do that. I suggest that you do. And uh, that's cat in the hat, and that'd be that. There actually, was there some, oh, the I was going to say, was there some high point news last week? Yeah. They, they got uh, shadow banned or they <laughs> uh, Facebook and Instagram attacked them, told them that they were bad and that they, they're not allowed to put up pictures of guns. So uh, a gun manufacturer is being disciplined by Instagram for putting up a picture of a gun on their webs on their social media. <laughs> Maybe they should just put up pictures of puppies. So if you have a, a if you're a gun manufacturer and you have an Instagram, uh, you're not allowed to put pictures of guns there because Instagram will randomly get mad at you. So put pictures of puppies and kittens on. I got a notification the other day in my email that we had a post removed that we had put up in 2017. Oh wow! But I couldn't figure out which one it was, so I have no idea why it was removed. They're or- psychotic. 2017 they're, it's like the psychotic. algorithm finally caught whatever it was i don't know what it was it, it doesn't matter they're all they're all communists all right zachary is going to let you guys know if you're a recently uh if you're a new listener a recent listener if you've just been listening for a little while or maybe you've been here for a long time and you just forgot pay attention to what zach's about to hip you to attention new listeners We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Yes, that is what you should do. But in addition to all that that you just heard, and, and uh, uh, if you're not following Student of the Gun on Juxi, J-U-X-X-I, what is that? I will tell you what it is. It is a brand new platform. It is a video platform that is not supported by YouTube, and it is not supported by Google. So if, if YouTube decides, we hate you gun people, and they turn everything off, Juxy will not be affected because they have their own stuff. They host their own stuff. Here's what you need to do, though. Before what? your stuff gets removed from the other video platform, you need to have it on Juxy. That's right. You can go to Juxy.com. There's an import feature. You create your account, verify your email address, start importing your videos over there. At 
for nothing, no other reason than just to have them in case. Just in case. Because we all know that it, any any day, any moment, uh, YouTube or Google can, you know, YouTube owns Google, Google owns YouTube, whatever. Um, they might just, it's like Jared said, we had a, a post from 2017 just randomly removed. We didn't like that, so we took it away. Why didn't you like it? Because you're a violator. You're a community standard violator. What standard did I violate? Don't you worry about it. Exactly. So, uh, Juxy, it's your story, our technology, better future. J-U-X-S-I dot com. And if you're not following Student of the Gun, if you're not subscribed to Student of the Gun on that, well, you're wrong. And you should do it because Zach is constantly putting new material up there, which you should be watching and reviewing and all that good stuff. So get your butt over there. Quit making excuses. All right. It is time for our uh, Brownells bullet points brought to you by our good friends at Brownells. All right, bing, bang, boom. One of the things that we uh, have featured and discussed and talked about uh, on Brownell's website, if you go all the way over to the right-hand side, it says emergency and survival gear. And we have talked about that uh, at length for going on years and years now. You say, well, I mean, that's that's over now, right? I mean, we already talked about it. We don't need to talk about it anymore. Everything is, is hunky-dory. Everything's cool, copacetic, right? I don't know. Is it? Is it? Uh, something that uh, was actually very cool and very interesting that I discovered actually just yesterday was that the state of Utah is rather than to try and convince people to just be a good minion of the state and, uh, you know, uh, they actually want people, individuals, to take care of themselves and their own families and their own communities. And they have, well, they've set up a website with a checklist and it's called be ready.utah.gov. But if you just put in be ready, Utah into your favorite search engine, it'll take you there. Jared's there right now. And Jared, give us some of the highlights. Yeah, I'm just looking at this. It's actually, I think I've mentioned this a couple years ago on, show but this right here be ready community there's a bunch of resources here that help you make a plan you can get a kit from them you can be informed and get involved they have what's called private sector preparedness councils now if you're not from utah you can still use this framework yeah for your I, local community it doesn't have to be here now if you are in utah there are actually resources available to you from the state it says to request a resource or presentation contact the state citizen core coordinator at 801-538-3400 they will help you prepare your community and there's actually a really good starting place here if you haven't already started with your community and you're looking to get people involved there's this thing called an extreme event game it says the state owns one ready to go game set that you can borrow and facilitate yourself or request a facilitator to do it for you for free it teaches the necessity of all community partners working together to recover from disaster and gives the why individual preparedness is so important and, and then that gives you like to go check it out it's designed to last one hour and it's for 12 to 48 adults or teens so if you can get your neighborhood together for one hour with 12 to 48 adults or teens then you can uh, play this game and i think that's a great way to i'm actually going to implement this i'm going to see how it works and i will let you know in the coming weeks but that's a fantastic um, resource that's available here and in addition to that there is i'm hitting puberty again there's a be ready community conversation that's available for you to look at whole community coalitions and citizen cores um community preparedness volunteer programs so if you are already prepared yourself and you want to help your community get prepared there's a volunteer program that you can actually be part of be ready community recognition program. If you want to be, if you want those accolades to be recognized, there you go. If that's, if that's what you really need in your life, some accolades, 
Uh, one one thing they have, if you scroll down, it, it has it says twelve areas of preparation, and it, uh, this say twelve points for individual, family, and computer. Is that what you're talking about? Oh uh, no, what are you on? See, this is what I'm on right here. See? Yeah, that's where I am. Yep, that's where you are. Uh, so. Yeah, you go down here, and it says 12 areas of preparation. I don't know. Why does yours look different than mine? I don't know. That's interesting. Are, are you gov? Yeah. That's weird. There yeah, right there. Exactly. Ah. So if you're looking for a checklist, uh, shelter, clothing, water, food, hygiene, and sanitation, lights and power, first aid, communication tools, safety, and security, tools and personal items, cooking, important documents, and transportation. So uh, if you, you've got that or if you're interested in that or uh, or maybe you're thinking, uh, oh, it says, oops, you blew up the Internet. I blew up the Internet. Oh, that's funny. I went to the safety and security one, and it says, you blew up the Internet. Oh, the page dang. is no longer here. I went or, to shelter, clothing, and fire, and it is here. There are videos, there are downloads, and there are links. Or this it is, never existed in the first place. Yeah, that could be it. It's, uh, this is actually a very in-depth video. I'm proud of Utah. Yeah. Well, they they need to they need to uh, get on their site and, and uh, unfornicate themselves because the cooking one says you blew up the Internet, too. <laughs> so apparently of the 12 preparedness areas – Safety, security, and cooking are not that important. <laughs> or they didn't have anybody, they didn't have anyone to contribute. Maybe they didn't have anyone to contribute. I don't know. They just didn't look in the right spot. They didn't look in the right place. I don't know. So, uh, But it's never a bad idea to be self-sufficient. It is never a bad idea to know who your neighbors are. It is never a bad idea to work with your neighbors. Uh, those, those things are never bad ideas and you should, you want to know who your neighbors are before the crisis. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Vern? Uh, before there's a, a national crisis or a local crisis or a hurricane or a flood or a tornado or whatever, you should probably be prepared before, not after. Because there, there's all there are always going to be the last minute people. They're the people, and we we saw this in you know on the uh, the Gulf Coast with hurricanes. The the hurricane is less than twenty four hours from landfall, and where are people piled up inside of Kroger, piled up inside of Walmart? That's not where you want to be. Uh, if the hurricane is less than twenty four hours away, you don't want to be piled up with all the other normies or ugmos. Uh, inside of a Walmart fighting over the last candle or fighting over the last pack of batteries or whatever. No, uh, that is a bad idea. So what you need to do and what you should be doing is you should be uh, on this right now, this very second. Now we, at Student of the Gun, in case you didn't know it, in case you weren't aware of it, you say, "What? well, well, what have you ever done, Mr. Smart Guy, to, to help people out? Mm, I only wrote about a million books. No, I didn't write that many books, but I've written a few. And one of them is called the Patriot Fire Team Manual, and it's all about working with your friends and neighbors uh, and communicating with them and being on the same sheet of music and making sure that you and your friends and neighbors uh, are all prepared We've got different levels of preparedness. Uh, we ha talk about, in that book, we talk about how to uh, talk to your family, how to get the wives and kids involved, and so on and so forth. And because you guys requested it, because you were so excited about it, uh, we did the Patriot Fire Team Manual. Then we did the Patriot Fire Team Equipment Guide, because you guys were like, yeah, but I want, you know, I want to talk about hardware. I want to talk about guns. So... Uh, the equipment guide is very hardware centric. We, we focused on hardware very, very deliberately. And then book three in the three part series is called the mission planner. Uh, this is when you got to engage that gray matter between your ears, uh, because you need more than just stuff. You need intelligence, you need communication, you need leadership, you need people to do the right things. Uh, it's not enough to just go buy a bunch of stuff. 
Uh, that's it's good to own stuff, but you need way more than that. And then the mission planner, we talk about talents. Everybody has something to offer. Patrol tactics, intelligence gathering, mission planning, night operations, threat assessment, and professional leadership, as well as a lot of other stuff. So that is there for you. Those resources are for there for you if you go to shop sotg.com that is shop sotg.com you can get the books is that we have those books in stock sack i believe that we do indeed have every single book that we are supposed to be selling in stock right now up to and including for the first time ever available to the public we have the five strategies for, that could save your life book available to you the standard common man, or whatever, what's the phrase? The common man, the, 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 every, the everyman. The normie, the common person. You, yes, the, the everyman, everyman listening to us. Right. For the first time ever. So congratulations to Utah for uh, taking the uh, time to put that together and for actually encouraging people to take care of themselves and not just look to the government as their, as their daddy who's supposed to solve all their problems for them. Because Utah. not only are they incapable, they yeah. are... The, the the government is the worst at solving problems, not the best. It's interesting. That mm -hmm. All right. So it is time for us to move on. But before we move on, I, I want you to uh, perk up your ears and listen to what Zach has to say. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed. That is what you should do. That's what you can do. We, will, uh, we give you permission. You are allowed. And now it is time for us, as always, to move into... Our Student of the Gun Homeroom. Student of the Gun Homeroom is brought to you by Crossbreed Holsters. If you go to crossbreedholsters.com, use the promotional code SOTG. When you do that, you're going to save some money. You're going to be a happy camper. All right, so... I figured you guys were getting a little bit tired of bear attacks and buffalo attacks, uh, bison attacks. So. Hippo attacks. Yeah, and hippo attacks. Um, so we decided to go over to the uh, the south, go to the south, the east coast, and we've got a story out of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Um, Jared's going to go ahead and get into it, but this is from WQI one two three four five six on your side w m f w m b f news nbc on your side local and all that good stuff it says coroner's office 75 year old man killed in alligator attack in myrtle beach area june 27th 2022 just happened the horry county Coroner's office has identified the man who was killed in an alligator attack in the Myrtle Beach area. Deputy Coroner Michelle McSpadden said 75-year-old Michael Burstein from the Myrtle Birch. Jeez, I cannot Myrtle talk. Birch, Myrtle Beach Myrtle area. Myrtle Beach, I'm going to take a sip. From the Myrtle Beach area drowned during the attack. Horry County Fire and Rescue responded to a water rescue call on Friday in the area of Excalibur Court in the Myrtle Beach Golf and Yacht Club. Mm. When crews arrived on the scene, they determined that an alligator had taken hold of Burstein and retreated into a nearby retention pond. Multiple witnesses told responding crews that they saw the victim standing at the water's edge of the community pond when the alligator lunged from the water and attacked. He's dragging bursting under. Man, that sucks. Well, yeah. All right. You do you remember, Jared? The you probably don't because you were pretty young. You you did you remember ever seeing the alligators like moving? No. All right. When we we lived uh, when Jared was young, we lived in Florida. Lived I saw in, the the little one that was on that dude's fishing hook in Mississippi. Oh yeah, cut free. But no, the alligators are well. They're they're 
monsters, they're dinosaurs, and they're nothing but muscle. And we we when you were a little kid, we took a, a there's a place called Mayaka State Park, yeah, and you can take a boat ride out onto the big lake, and you can see all the alligators and stuff. And uh, generally in the daytime, they're nocturnal predators. So in the daytime, they just kind of float around like logs. They don't do a whole lot of activity in the daytime. That's the general consensus. Uh, we were watching one, and I was looking at it, and I saw something in the water move by its tail. It could have been a turtle or whatever. And this thing came up out of the water. You could see the white of its belly, and it did a complete 180 and whammo nailed wow. whatever was in the water and it was that quick i mean it was it's it's amazing they can if, if they're facing away from you they can flip over in the water at least they can flip over 180 in about one second wow that's fast yeah uh it, they're well like, they're all muscle and they're the, an apex predator i don't think there's anything i i don't think other than man that there are any natural predators or alligators well but, maybe Maybe in Africa or something, but yeah, I'll just say go ahead. But and mostly say in that. Africa, they're crocodiles, a hippo, exactly hippos. That's right. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I just saw a video the other day of like y- you know how at like those little parks or whatever they'll have like the the trainer and the alligators like hey come sit on the alligator's back and ride it right because mm-hmm. like once you go and sit on it then it can't really get at you and also you can just reach down hold its mouth shut because all of, all of an alligator and crocodiles. Uh, muscles are all into closing, not opening their mouth. So you right. can, a, like a crab can pinch their mouth closed, right? Right. That's why you can hold it to get closed yeah. with duct tape. Exactly. Except apparently the trainer was just like, ah, nah, he's nice and calm and didn't really have a grip on the alligator's uh, little snoot. And it was like three frames of the air. It was like, boom. Immediately he, he just swung his head back and snatched the guy's arm that was going to sit on him. Jeez. Wow! It was like, you're like not doing this. a blink of an eye between laying down flat and having his arm, in his the freaking guy behind him, arm in his mouth. Oh yeah, they're no joke, man. And, and well, it makes sense if they're all muscle. They oh, they are. That's what moves. Well, things. what you said, Zach, actually made me think of something. So, Zach said there's no natural predators for alligators. You said that, except men. Well, what he said, except hippos. I said hippos. You said hippos? Oh, Zach. Sure, said How hippos. dare you not give me credit? So, you gave credit to Zach for I implied, both things. I implied what hippos. You said and what I said. So what I think we should do, I think the solution is to to reduce the wild alligator population in Florida would be to get some of those Colombian hippos and release them in Florida so that they can, they can keep down the alligator population. So that way, the alligators will be a will be a predator. Oh, I yeah. second this motion. I second this motion. It's like, and besides that, they're so darn cute. They and they wiggle their widow ears. You know, they put they pop their widow heads up out of the water and they wiggle their widow ears. They're so cute. Well, I know that the listeners they were asking a question about this alligator. Mm-hmm. Like, well, what did they do with it? Did they make sure it was humanely? Oh put yeah, down. yeah, yeah. So, uh, good news, guys. The South Carolina Department of National Natural Resources, Resources. biologists, and an SCDNR contracted alligator removal service determined that the alligator should be humanely euthanized. So, oh yeah, there so you go. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Witnesses uh, said that the man was saying at the water's edge, and uh, yada yada. Uh, you, all right, you guys who are not familiar with alligators and alligator attacks, uh, they say that he drowned. This is what alligators do to you. Alligators don't chomp you to death. Okay. What they do is they grab you, they pull you into the water, and they go into this thing. This is a National Geographic, just in case you haven't. Uh, and this thing called a death roll. And the alligator just keeps rolling they grab a hold of your leg or arm or whatever, and they pull you into the water. This is what they do to deer. You know, they, they do to other animals or dogs or whatever. You know, you guys know that deer, or not deer, that um, alligators love to eat dogs, right? It's like caviar. It's like what? it's like alligator caviar. Uh, what are alligators designed to balance? Like, what is their natural food that they everything consume? A- anything that they want to put in their mouths. 
Um, I know, but God put things on the earth for reasons. Well, I mean, right? they, so I guess they, you could say anything have anything that use anything that uses watering holes because that's what they're like to do. Is so yeah. they're there well, to make sure they, the watering I mean, holes don't get crowded. Eat, I guess they, they eat turtles, and um, you know that they're cannibals too. That they eat other alligators. If they get hungry enough, they'll kill another. They'll kill a smaller alligator and eat it. But uh, yeah, that that's how they kill you. Is they grab you, pull you into the water, and then they death roll you. Uh, they just roll and roll and roll and roll and roll until you stop kicking. And then once you stop kicking, they shove you up under a log or or in their den or whatever, and and leave you there. Um, well, I, I know you guys are like well, that's what Crocodile Dundee said. Yeah, well, that's what the alligators do. Uh, and that's that's why when you go to Florida or anywhere where there are alligators, they have big signs by the ponds and lakes that do say, not "Do not walk your dog by the edge of the water," yeah. because the alligator will smell it and he will bolt out of the water like lightning. The dog will be in and the mouth. snatch Fifi or Fufu or Fafa or whatever right off of the end of that leash, and he'll yank it into the pond, and you'll be standing there screaming. Uh, and I've seen people, I've seen idiots do that. I've seen tourists, when we lived in Florida, tourist idiots walking their dogs down by the edge of the lake and pond. And I'm like, it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. And then I've also seen crazy, uh, like, redneck, Cajun-type people standing in waders up to their, you know, bellies and chests, or you know, basically up to their bellies, fishing in alligator infested waters and they're like no it's a daytime they won't mess you that I, I, I don't care i don't care i don't care and this Those guy Cajun people know how to do it though yeah oh yeah this guy here mr bernstein uh it was daytime right it was daytime and he's walking by the edge of the water and bam this gator got him and it killed him but thank the lord that they're going to humanely euthanize it Maybe he was dressed as a dog. Maybe, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe he had, maybe it's like, uh, maybe he had been petting a dog recently and he had the dog smell him. But So you're like, well, what are you telling me for, man? Why are you even bringing this up? Uh, if, if somebody would have been there, like with Mr. Burstein uh, and had a gun, you're like, what are you supposed to do, shoot the alligator? Actually, yes. The answer is actually Yes. If if I'm walking by the side of the, the pond and an alligator grabs me and is dragging me into the thing, I and you're armed and you're near, I want you to shoot the alligator. Just, well, how many times do you have to shoot it? As many as it takes. Just give it something now, else to think about. I, I have a question for you as you are very familiar with calibers and stuff. About what would it take to pierce the skull of an alligator? A twenty-two. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They kill. Tw- they they shoot. They shoot them between the eyes with twenty twos. The 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 swamp people. That's how they. That's how they kill them. They they put the muzzle. They point the muzzle right between their eyeballs with a twenty, and they shoot them with a twenty two yep. through the into their little tiny brains. But I, you know, my thing is just you just just keep shooting it until it uh, it doesn't want to do that anymore. Uh, whether that's one, two, five, seven, seventeen times, I don't know. All right, you guys want to talk about Supreme Court decisions? All right, we're talking about Supreme Court decisions. So the the Supreme Court recently spanked the communists. The communists are getting spanked all over the place. As a matter of fact, New York got a double spanking. Did you see that crossbreed holster? Was it? Somebody's wearing yeah, a crossbreed. Look, look, it's like the video preview. Uh huh. Okay, it's coming soon. Crossbreed. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. I just saw that. I just saw that. So uh the New York got spanked twice. Now we're not gonna talk about the the voter spanking that they got, but we are gonna talk about the uh well, Jared, what does it say? It says Supreme it's, Court strikes down New York gun law, expanding concealed carry rights. All right. So here we go. This now, is last week. Those of you that have been here for a while, you know about the poll that I presented to the audience back in, I don't even remember what year this was, but the question was something along the lines of, do women who squat 
and have bigger booties like spankings more. Now, the reason I bring this up is because we don't know <laughs> what type New York is. Do they like the spankings or not? Oh, oh, wow. Well, I, I apologize, audience. I apologize to everyone in the audience for that. Uh, Dateline Washington Supreme Court on Thursday. Take struck down a New York law that placed strict restrictions. That's an interesting combination there. Strict restrictions. On carrying concealed firearms in public for self-defense. Finding its requirement that applicants seek a concealed carry license demonstrate a special need for self-defense is unconstitutional. Uh, which we've known for a long time. Yeah, okay. Welcome to the party, New York. In a 6-3 to three ruling, the Supreme Court reversed a lower court decision upholding New York's 108-year-old law limiting who can obtain a license to carry a concealed handgun in public. Proponents of the measure warned that a ruling from the high court invalidating it could threaten gun restrictions in several states and lead to more firearms on city streets. Okay. They forgot to add lawfully. Lawful. Lawful but firearms. More law-abiding people are going to be carrying guns, and that's a bad thing. Justice Clarence Thomas delivered the majority opinion for the ideologically divided court, writing that New York's proper cause requirement prevented law-abiding citizens from exercising their Second Amendment right, and its licensing regime is unconstitutional. Amen. This is what Thomas wrote, and I recommend the ruling is actually pretty long and beefy, but if you have time, uh, maybe when you're sitting on the potty and you don't have anything else to do on your phone, Pull up the ruling and read some of it. I think it was like 200 pages. But there's some there's some really good quotes in there for you. Uh, this is in the article. It says, Thomas wrote, The constitutional right to bear arms in public for self-defense is not a second-class right, subject to an entirely different body of rules than the other Bill of Rights guarantees. We know of no other constitutional right that an individual may exercise only after demonstrating to government offices or officers, some special need. That is not how the First Amendment works when it comes to unpopular speech or the free exercise of religion. Dot, 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 yet. He didn't say that. Yet. That was my addition. It is now how the Sixth Amendment, or it's not how the Sixth Amendment works when it comes to a defendant's right to confront the witnesses against him. And it's not how the Second Amendment works when it comes to public carry for self-defense. Writing in dissent for the liberal wing of the court, Justice Stephen Breyer noted the rise in gun violence in the U.S. and ubiquity of firearms. Wow. And warned that the states working to pass more stringent firearms laws will be severely burdened by the court's decisions. What? Well, however, these what a more, scumbag. The states that have more stringent firearms laws have higher crime rates. Crime rates. If you look at Chicago over Father's Day weekend, Oh, you mean uh, 47 people shot? Yeah. That's not that big of a deal. So, so Briar, it's no I, big deal. I like reading the the full, um, what, what do they call them? I guess it's a ruling, the full ruling, the full text of the ruling, because it gives you, as people in the Second Amendment space, it shows you what other arguments you're going to have to talk or, or respond to mm. when you're talking about this with your friends or family or whatever, and it gives you answers to those things if you don't already have them. Uh, Breyer wrote, in my view, when courts interpret the Second Amendment, it is constitutionally proper, indeed often necessary, for them to consider the serious dangers and consequences of gun violence that lead states to regulate firearms. The Second, or, the second Circuit has done so and has held that New York's law does not violate the Second Amendment. I would affirm that holding. Uh, the court's decision comes on the heels of a string of mass shootings from mid-May due early June that jolted the nation and acted as a catalyst for Congress to again mm. search for consensus on a legislative plan to curb gun violence. On May 14th, a racist gunman went on a shooting rampage at a grocery store in Buffalo, New York, killing 10 people. Mm. 10 days later, 19 children and two teachers were massacred in a shooting at an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas. We've already talked about all this. Mm -hmm. And it says, Jen, then on June 1st, Four people were fatally shot at a medical building in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I didn't hear about that one. Yeah, you know why? Did you? Because the person who did it was not the right kind of person. Uh, so they're like, nah, we're not going to talk about that. Tulsa gun shooting gunman targeted surgeon he blamed for pain. 
Sorry oh, about this, shh, Dad. quiet, shh, quiet there. But here's the thing. Let, let's go ahead and uh, let me uh, go ahead and editorialize. Um, Breyer is wrong. Breyer is a communist. Breyer is a scumbag. And I'm going to tell you why. Because first of all, uh, all of their arguments are based upon lies. Uh, we, we have a hundred years nearly. Jared, what's the, uh, the time difference between 1934 and now? So when they say, uh, well, yeah, no, da, 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 we need more laws and, 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 and more laws. And like, well, we already have laws. We have lots of laws. We have hundreds of laws, thousands of laws. So when you say, well, in order to curb gun violence, we need more laws. So what you're saying is the 10,000 nationwide state, local, and federal laws, uh, gun laws, don't work and are not working. So your, your psycho, uh, you know, what's, what's the definition of insanity? The definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting uh, a different result. So we already have, now, what they will never bring up is they will never bring up the fact that in 1932, a man, an adult man or adult woman uh, with cash could walk into a hardware store and buy a fully automatic Colt, a fully automatic Thompson, uh, a, a, what, I think that could, you could buy a Rising back then, without a background check. With no forty four seventy three, if you had the money, you could walk into a hardware store in nineteen thirty two, and you could walk out with a Thompson submachine gun, fully automatic, select fire. Do you know how many shootings, how many mass shootings at schools occurred in nineteen thirty two? Actually, before the uh, the great uh, gun control act of thirty four, how many occurred? That would be a zero. Oh, I was going to say it has to be a ton. That would be zero. So when when there was a time in America when you could walk into a hardware store or a gun dealer or whatever, a grocery store maybe, I don't know, that's what uh, Diana, no, it wasn't Diana to get. It was that, uh, remember the, the grocery store lady? She, you can go into a grocery store and buy high-powered assault rifles with with special scopes because remember jared as the fox news expert told us it's the scope that determines whether or not it's assault weapon uh nobody ever points that out how come the writers and reporters and how come they never raise their hand or scratch their heads and say what happened to america what happened in the united states of america when we didn't have we did not have the uh, FBI insta background checks. We didn't have waiting periods. We didn't have the 4473 forms where you had to go in and show your ID and fill out the blocks and tell them whether you're uh, a, a, a Caucasian, Hispanic, or non-binary or whatever. None of that existed. And the number of mass school shootings were zero. None. <sighs> Oh, well, well, that's because they didn't have. This is what I'm playing here. Today. They didn't have schools back then, so our, there there weren't any schools. No, there were. Well, there, there, uh, uh, yeah. What what is it? The the worst school shooting, uh, the the first big worst one, Columbine, happened five years after. The Clinton crime bill, the assault weapons ban, the the bill, and and also five years after Bill Clinton passed the Gun Free Schools Act. Jared, you mean the Gun Free Schools Act didn't keep people from going to schools with guns and shooting people? But huh. it's a law, right? That's interesting. The the idea that we have someone sitting on the Supreme Court who says, well, you know, and the Second Amendment, and Thomas is 100% right. Just because Amendment 2 deals with firearms, we treat it differently. He said, 
You, you don't have to go to the government and ask them permission or or demonstrate to the government a special need to exercise Amendment 1 or Amendment 4 or Amendment 5 or Amendment 6 or whatever. In no other case do you have to go to a government agency and ask their permission to exercise a constitutional right. That's why, Jared and Zach and everyone in the audience, what that should tell you, the fact that that the other side feels like you do need to come to them and ask their permission to exercise a right. Now, what have we said literally since we turned these microphones on, Jared? If you have to ask for permission, it's not a right. Oh, yeah. It's a privilege. And a may issue concealed carry state, if it's a may issue, you know, California may issue, New Jersey may issue, New York may issue. What that means is, yeah, technically on the books, there is a, there's, there's a law and there's a bunch of words that say how you can go about trying to get permission from the government to carry a gun. But the, the reality of it is if you didn't donate to the sheriff's reelection campaign and you're not one of his bros or you're not an exceedingly rich, important person, uh, the answer for you, stupid peasants, is no, go away. That's not liberty. And I'm going to go ahead and pull out this book right here since we found it. I'm going to hold it up right here. And uh, this book, The Constitution of the United States of America and Selected Writings of Our Founding Fathers, um, is filled with information that's worth more than gold. But we're going to go to the Bill of Rights, which is, well, Jared, is the Bill of Rights law or is it just an opinion? Um, it is law. Now, remember, we had an enlightened adult member of our audience tell us that the U.S. Constitution isn't the law. It's merely a framework for the creation of government. Remember when that happened? Well, apparently the nine people at the Supreme Court didn't get that memorandum. No, the United States Constitution is law. Article number two. Oh, this isn't it. Let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. The Bill of Rights says... Uh, do, do, do. Article number four. Why is this? This is weird. Oh, this is the original draft. Yeah. Okay. The The full version is, I think, in the back. Somewhere. Okay, that's the original draft. But it says, a well-regulated militia, comma, meaning well-trained, disciplined, disciplined and trained, being necessary to the security of a free state, the right comma, this is all preamble. And see, when they dissect this, you have people who don't understand how to, you know, how to diagram a sentence in English. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Shall not be infringed. Doesn't say if Stephen Breyer gets super scared, or if the CIA or the FBI go out and buy guns for people so that they can commit uh, school shootings. <gasps> Shut your mouth! I'm still waiting for uh, the U.S. government to explain to us how an, an unemployed 18-year-old living in his grandmother's basement has the cash to buy two Daniel Defense rifles, ammunition, and accessories. When I was 18, I was lucky enough I was lucky to be able to scrape together enough money to buy a Ruger 1022 for 149 bucks. I think that's what it was, 139, 149. And you're like, "Oh, no, he had plenty of money. He was uh, an unemployed 18-year-old living in his grandma's basement. He had thousands of dollars in cash." You know, I I mean cuz every 18-year-old does. And also an an 18-year-old knows decides that he goes to a, a gun show, store, and there's a dozen, 10, 20 different black rifles on the shelf. There's Smith & Wesson M&Ps. There's the, 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 uh, the DS Arms one. There's the Daniel Defense. There's a, and uh, of all the guns, 
the ones that cost you know nine hundred dollars, eleven hundred dollars. This eighteen year old kid gravitates towards the most expensive one. Really? And buys really. two of them, right? And buys two of them. Yeah. The the estimate is is he bought like at least five thousand dollars worth of guns, gear, and hardware. Because we all, what we all know is every eighteen year old that's you know living unemployed eighteen year olds living in their grandparents' basement, they've got thousands of dollars in cash just laying around, right? Of course they do. He used his uh, what do they call it? His Discover card. No, <laughs> he used his uh, wasn't refund. What do they call that? His tax they, rebate. No, it wasn't. It wasn't that. It was the money, the free money, quote unquote, that they gave out during COVID. Uh, he uses COVID. He uses COVID stimulus money. Stimulus. That's yeah, what it was. He uses COVID stimulus money for that. And of course, what they don't say in here, what Breyer didn't say, is that, oh, uh, yeah, and and down there in Uvalde, uh, down there in Uvalde, a police officer had the opportunity to stop the killer, and decided not to. A police officer had the opportunity to stop the killer before he got into the school, but decided not to. Then the chief of police and his officers, once the killer got into the school, instead of rushing in and attacking the killer, they decided to hang out outside for an hour and 15 minutes. Then they lied. And said that they couldn't get to him because the door, the room was barricaded. And then Texas DPI came out and said, actually, the door wasn't even locked. You didn't even try. Surveillance footage shows that Uvalde PD didn't even try to get into the room where the killer was. Also, we know that a police officer uh, whose wife was one of the victims decided he was going to attack, go in and take out them, and the police on scene disarmed one of their own and escorted him out of the school so that he couldn't go in and stop the killer from slaughtering children. I wonder what Stephen Breyer thinks about that. I wonder what the uh, Kagan, Elena, I guess it was, I guess it was Breyer, Kagan, and... Uh, Who's the other uh, communist woman on the Supreme Court? I guess they all dissented. I wonder what they think about the the state. You see, that's always the excuse. It's like, oh, you don't need guns. That's why the police are there. The police have the police are allowed to have guns, but you're not. And just call nine one one, and the police will come and they'll save you. Maybe we could ask Breyer and Kagan and oh, who's the other communist woman on the freaking uh, to look. people are screaming it and they're like, ah, they're screaming it. Maybe we could ask them about the Supreme Court decision as to whether or not the police are constitutionally obligated to protect you. Soda mayor. Yep. Soda mayor. Soto mayor. Uh, another communist woman. Right. And they'll say, oh, no, actually, uh, the previous court ruled that, that police officers, whether it's a deputy sheriff or a state cop or local municipal, that they're actually not constitutionally obligated to protect you. So that sounds like what it sounds like to me there, Stephen Breyer and Sotomayor and Kagan, is that it's up to the people themselves to defend themselves. It's up to the people to protect themselves. So we have the same three communists on the court that would have to agree. They're like, well, yeah, we, you can't, you can't hold the cops responsible for you getting murdered or raped or whatever. It's not their responsibility. Okay. So whose responsibility is it to make sure I don't get raped or murdered? Uh, it's mine, right? So I should be able to carry a tool that will stop someone from raping or murdering or whatevering me. Uh, no, no, because gun violence is bad, and 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 bad people do bad things with guns, and 
I know bad people do bad things with guns. That's why I need one. You ever, you guys ever wonder, you guys out there in the audience, why not one person in the supposed media ever raises their hand and says, Justice Breyer, could you explain the responsibility of the state in keeping the people safe? What is the constitutional duty for the state to keep people safe from harm? Well, it's to protect the society at large, right? So if so on one hand, the state is telling me I have to come to it and get permission, special permission, and I have to demonstrate cause if I want to defend myself. But at, at the uh, with the same and this at the same time they're also saying yeah uh, and after we tell you no after the same people it's because it's it's the popo it's the sheriff or it's the city police or whatever they say no peasant we are not going to give you permission to defend yourself so you're going to make sure I don't get hurt or killed or murdered or raped right no that's not our job. We don't have to do that. Oh, so you can disarm me, and then you can also just step back like Pontius Pilate and wash your hands of it and let me get raped and murdered. Yes. That doesn't really sound very liberty to me. That doesn't sound like freedom or liberty. That sounds like like you're authoritarians, and you believe that you are above the citizenry and that you are better than the citizenry, that, that citizens are peasants and you are the authority figures. Yeah, it kind of does sound like that, doesn't it? Yeah. So. Oh, do we have questions? Uh, is it true that no mass shootings were ever committed by NRA members? Uh, so Airman Brett, I, I believe so. I, I don't believe that any NRA members have ever been involved in a, in a mass shooting. If you can come up with one, let me know, but I don't believe so. Uh, in the last 20 years, 99.9957% of all mass shooters have been Democrats. Some of them have been proud registered uh, Democrat Obama supporters. Remember the uh, guy who went schizo and shot up the Republican softball game? Yeah. Was a hardcore Obama Democrat. But we're not supposed to talk about that. Shh, not supposed to talk about that. It's it's not our side that goes schizo and, and mass murders people. It's theirs. They won't ever admit it. They won't ever address it. They won't ever talk about it, but it's true, and we all know it's true. Do we have any other questions? Boy, do you boys have anything else to say? No, I was just reading I, some I more do, on the Supreme Court decision. I do have one thing, which is, Something I've been kind of thinking about on the topic of the whole, you know, mass shootings and disarmament and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And that the biggest thing, one of the biggest things that people say is, like, or not one of the biggest things people say, whatever, is how many children need to die before you freaking accept more gun control or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. That's one of the big lines that people like to put on signs and uh, stuff. Yeah. Now we're an hour and eight minutes and who cares? Go ahead. Uh, and my my only thought is, well, if we take every single instance of a child or someone being killed with a gun in a school, and then we take that and compare it to, say, the CCP, Nazi Germany, Soviet Russia, even like the, the feudal era of Japan, where the government said, yeah, you guys can't be trusted with weapons, and took away all the all the weapons from the citizenry. If we took compared those numbers, I think there's a lot more dead children from disarmament than not from disarmament. Oh, obviously, there, there there's uh, the CCP is responsible for the death of at least forty million of its disarmed people. The Chinese Communist Party over oversaw the death, the ex, the starvation. Some were killed in camps, some were starved to death, uh, but they were all disarmed slaves. Uh, minimum 40 million. Soviet Union disarmed their people. Uh, minimum 20 million. Minimum 20 million. And you know, everyone's like, Hitler was the worst person in the history of the world. 
he might have been the worst person in the history of the world in your opinion but hitler didn't even come close to killing the number of people that stalin and mao did the chai comms and the soviet communists have killed probably what 10 times more a conservative estimate is that totalitarian regimes who've disarmed their people have have been responsible for the death of at least 100 million and of course the hey, same hey, let's, people, let's just whittle that number down just for the sake of the argument how many of those do you think were children oh, how many of those do you think were below the age of 18 oh a lot so oh, a lot. if, if we you mean, just take that number it's still what you think 100 150 times more than what's happening in schools well i'm not trying the, to downplay it i'm just saying like no you're right think well, about it the same exact the same exact people that that want to protect children if this law will save just one child's life then it'll be worth it really so you want to close down all the abortion slaughterhouses nationwide right Oh, that's a woman's right to choose. Yeah, but that's a that's a child. You're choosing to to extinguish the life of a child. That's women's health care. So, health care is killing an, a uh, a baby. A baby is. Uh, it's not the same thing. You're no, you're right. It's not the same thing because Planned Parenthood oversees the the slaughter of over three hundred thousand children a year. Well, yeah, but those children would be inconvenient. Oh. You see, if you really wanted to be sick and if you really wanted to take it to where they live, you could say that the guy in Uvalde was just was just uh, doing late-term abortions. Disgusting. Oh, that's sick. It's twisted. Yeah, it is. But how is it that the same people that think 300,000 abortions a year is women's health care, but, but people who lawfully carry firearms and have and have never harmed a person have to be disarmed for safety for the children. You're a liar, and I don't listen to liars. It says, in a concurring opinion, Justice Samuel Alito criticized Breyer's dissent for recounting recent mass shootings. He said, does this dissent think that laws like New York's prevent or deter such atrocities? Will a person bent on carrying out a mass shooting be stopped if he knows that it is illegal to carry a handgun outside the home? And how does this dissent account for the fact that one of the mass shootings near the top of its list took place in Buffalo? The New York law at issue in this case obviously did not stop that perpetrator. And that's i was trying to find that yeah that's because I mean, it's like the the dude said well how does this affect you know the recent mass shootings and blah 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 it's like one of them happened in the state where the law already exists so you're saying that the new york law is good law and that it's gonna the new york law giving the state the authority to to tell you you're not allowed to protect yourself is a good one and that keeps people safe but yeah you just saw that it didn't keep people safe well Here's the deal. At the end of the day, liberalism is a mental disease, and liberals are liars. Democrats, liberals, communists, they're all the same, and they're liars. All of their arguments are based on emotion, and they're based on lies. And we need to decide, will we be ruled, will we be disarmed by lies? Because that is what they support their arguments with. They support their arguments with emotion and lies not reason not fact not history not law but lies will you allow criminals in government to disarm you with lies will you le let them tell lies and then disarm you it's up to you man uh but i for one say no all right to, on thursday's episode three letter tyranny uh you're wondering you're like did does a an unelected bureaucracy can an unelected bureaucracy just create law through memorandum and a lot of people think i'm going to talk about the aft but i'm not uh our boy uh, jo john lott 
from the crimeresearch.org did a little study. Uh, more guns, less crime. And we're going to go down south, way down south, uh, south of the border to Brazil and take a look at what's going on down there. And you might be interested. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, beware of the gym douche. And <laughs> we've got a leadership lesson for you. That's all coming up on Thursday's show. Uh, and uh, uh, we've got that. So we're not going to have any uh, uh, um, new shows uh, next week because we'll be on vacation. But if you'd like to join us for the bonus hour, well, you can do that. And the boys are going to tell you how you can right now. It's easy. You go to getsotg.com, follow the instructions there. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to the stellar support team at uh, Student of the Gun support team at support at studentofthegun.com. That's right. Yes, indeed. Get over there right now. You can get in on the show. And also, something amazing to point out. So... Uh, we've got the Precision Rifle class coming up this August, right? Yes, we do. Have we mentioned to the public the thing about the grad program? About how awesome they are? Or, or that if they are a grad program member, that they get a huge, monstrous discount off the price of admission? Yeah, that one. Oh, so yeah, if you're a member of the, of the grad program and you want to come to our Precision Rifle class, there are a couple of seats left, and that is the weekend of 5, 6, 7 August. Is that correct? Yep, that's correct. Uh, five, six, seven, August, and uh, if you are a grad program member, you get a significant discount off of the class admission, and it is an exclusive. It's an all inclusive. It's like going to Sandals, Jamaica. It's all inclusive. You get your training, you get the range fees, you get your food, you get your lodging, all paid for in one fee. And we don't and even you get charge to spend extra. time. But yeah, we don't. And we, you even get to spend time in in wild and wonderful Wyoming with us. So we it's, have it's win win win, baby. This many seats left. We have two. So, so if you want to be know. one of them, I suggest that you get on it. Jump on it. It's never too Jump late until it. it's too late. That's right. It's never too late until it's too late. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being a member of the Student of the Gun audience. Thank you for supporting everything that we do, for paying attention and listening louder. Until the next time, we're all together. Remember, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new, free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links and remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.